In this video, we're going to introduce Sequence Manager, a feature available in both Compact and Control Logics. Sequence Manager enables you to store a simple recipe directly in a controller. That recipe is a recipe of equipment phase steps, as shown by this example here. Here we have a simple recipe where we are running a charge phase in the controller, which is an equipment phase using Phase Manager. Then we're running a mix and weight phase, and then when those complete, we're running a transfer phase. Here is a more complicated example, where again we're running a charge phase to add some water, uh, but now running a recipe with steps in parallel, where we're agitating, adding acid, adding caustic, mixing for an amount of time based on the weight that's in our reactor, prompting the operator what we'd like to do, and then based on the response to the prompt, either transferring out our mixture to the final storage tank, or mixing for a further amount of time, and then asking the operator again. These sequences can have recipe values that you can specify. So in this example at the bottom here you can see we've specified one value um, that we'd like um, the user to specify when we start the recipe, um, the make quantity. On our simple recipe we have three values, the heat temperature that we'd like to heat to, the heat time we'd like to heat for, and the amount of powder to charge. For each step you can then either use these recipe values or you can um, directly code a value. In this example, we've selected the charge powder step um, and we can see here that we've set the material to charge as a hard coded value, a value of one, which in our case is DI water. But for the set point, we're going to use our recipe value, the charge amount. Sequence Manager then comes with a ActiveX available for Factory Talk View Site Edition. These ActiveXs allow you to interact with the sequences in a controller, um, <clears throat> gain ownership of them, run them to create rest to run and make products, and then release them again. Here we have the available ActiveXs. The bottom one shows us a list of the sequence manager sequences that are available in our controller. If you remember, we just had two recipes in our controller, so there are just two shown in the list. Above that, we have an ActiveX that then shows us the details of the selected recipe. And on the right, we have an ActiveX that shows us um, the values and parameters for the selected recipe. So if I select the simple recipe here, then you can see the details of that recipe and the make quantity amount, which is the amount that we want to make for that entire recipe. If we click the other select the other recipe here, then we have the details of that recipe and the values that we can run and set. So let's run a recipe. So I select my recipe from the control. I need to take ownership. So Sequence Manager has a concept of ownership. Either an operator can own a sequence from the HMI or the controller can own the recipe from within the logic. You can set a unique ID for each execution of a recipe, your batch ID, for example. So let's give this a demo batch ID. This can be any text that you like. You can see that the ID has been assigned in the control here to that recipe and you can see it shown at the top here. Now we've assigned an ID, let's check that our recipe values are how we want before we run the recipe. Looking at the heat time I've decided that I only want to heat for 10 seconds. As you can see if you make any changes before you start you are prompted to confirm that you wish to make those changes. After making that change I shall then start our recipe. The sequence is now running in the controller and the ActiveX is showing you where we are in this recipe. So at the moment you can see we're currently in the first step here where we're running our charge equipment phase to charge 
powder in this case. We can, if we wish, change the ActiveX down here to show us the values for our selected step in this recipe. So here we can see the amounts that the recipe has specified, and the charge material of 1, an amount of 100. And we can also then look at the outputs. You can see the outputs have just been set when the charge completed, and the equipment phase has reported the actual amounts that it's charged and the lots of those charge. Our well, sequence has now moved on and we're agitating, and then finally it's moved on to the transfer out. So the transfer out phase is running and we're emptying our tank to our final storage. Okay, our sequence is now complete. Uh, we can reset that sequence back to idle from the control here, and then we can run it again. With these active X's, you have um, full control over the execution. So you can hold the sequence as it's running, and it will go into hold at that point, and then you can restart it, you can stop it, you can abort it. You can also take manual control of these steps, um, manually start them and stop them, or change and go back um, to a previous step and run it from that point if you wish to recover. As an option with Sequence Manager, um, there is an option to collect all of the execution of your recipe from the controller and place it into a reports SQL database where you can then look at batch reports. So let's look at the details of that sequence that we've just run to see what we get in the batch reports. Here we have a listing of the standard reports that come uh, with that database if you go for the option of batch <coughs> report logging. The first one is a listing of the batches that have ran between uh, the last 24 hours by default, uh, but you can modify that to show the batches over larger or shorter periods. So here is our first report showing the batch listing. Um, and in the last 24 hours, we've only done this demo that we've just seen, so only one batch is listed. Let's go back to our list of reports and look at the next one, which is the batch summary. So this is a summary report of a particular run of a sequence manager sequence. Here you can see that you have header data showing you um, the batch ID that we assigned, the unique ID that the system assigned to the execution of that sequence, the recipe name, which is the name of our Sequence Manager program in the controller, and then the start and end times and the durations, and then for each equipment phase that we ran in the controller, the start and end times of those, and how long they took. Let's look at the next report, which is the batch detail. This has the same header information as the batch summary, but then gives us more detail for each equipment phase as it ran. So here you can see for each phase, the values of the parameters that were specified by Sequence Manager when they ran each equipment phase, and the report values those equipment phases logged back to the system. <clears throat> Let's look at the next report. The next report that's available in Sequence Manager is the batch execution report. The material usage, forward and backward tracing are only available if you then move on to batch talk batch in the future. Batch execution shows you the timing of a sequence that you ran. So here we can see for this demo sequence that we had a single operation that we ran. And if we move to the second page, in that operation, we can see the timing of those equipment phases that are run by Sequence Manager. So you can use this to see where the time is being used and maybe where you might be able to improve things and make something more quickly. The next report that we're going to look at is the duration comparison report. So this report is all about comparing executions of different sequences. In the last 24 hours, we've only run one sequence, so we only have one to compare. Uh, but we can go back into earlier time and select previous executions of recipes, if we wish, and compare them. Let's then move on to the batch exceptions report. 
This report is all about any failures that occurred when we ran the batch. So if we had had a failure that caused that sequence manager sequence to go into hold, or we had manually put it into hold, then that would be shown in this report. There were no failures, so there's nothing on this report to show. Finally, <clears throat> we have <clears throat> three more reports available to us. We have the operation sequence report. Again, this report is only available if you move to factory talk batch. You have the event summary report, which is available for us in both Sequence Manager and Batch. And just to show that you can customize reports, I've created a custom batch detail report. Let's look at the event summary report. This report is showing you all of the events that were logged into our SQL database by Sequence Manager as we ran that sequence. So as we scroll through, you can see each of the items that are being logged into the database. You can customize it and decide which values from the database you wish to look at. So let's select all the values from our database. So we can look at all the columns, and then we can scroll down and look at all the details. What you see at the start here is at the beginning, you see the details of the beginning of this execution and the recipe details of the recipe that's being um, ran, you see. Then <clears throat> values coming down from the recipe, such as the heat temperature and the heat time and the powder charge amount that we specified. And then we move on to our first execution of an equipment phase going into the running state with these values. And we can move on to the second page and follow the entire execution through all the way to the end. This just shows you all the available data, which you can then obviously then use to make your own customized reports. And an example of a customized report is this one here, the custom batch detail. Here I've taken the, the standard batch detail and I've modified it to add some additional tables at the beginning that show us particular types of data from that database, as well as changing the icon shown at the top of the report. The key thing to remember is that this is using a standard facility of Microsoft SQL Server called Microsoft Reporting Services, which means that these reports um, are changeable, you can open them up and see how they were written, you can make copies and make your own, we can make your own from scratch. And that concludes our introduction to Sequence Manager.